Hello Retro Gamers, and welcome to another episode of Retro Game On. Today we're taking a look at California Games on the NES, released in 1987 by Epix. As the title would suggest, it includes the lovely vertical state of California and the US of A, as well as games. What kind of games? Gnarly games. Tubular games. Totally. Radical. Awesome games. Dude. And whatever other slang is mentioned in the actual manual for this game. There. Agro, but not like as an angry, but uh, 1980s beach culture slang or something. It's a different time, man. In a nutshell, California Games includes a bunch of games to play. However, they're not just any games, but instead activities that would have been perceived as cool in 80s California. Basically, a bunch of consecutive events, with the aim being to master all six and score the highest points possible to be the most tubular of your friends. In fact, the entirety of the content included with California Games can be played through in less than 10 minutes. That's kind of aside the point though, since the idea is to master each art. It's when you start playing each event over and over that you'll find there is a whole different level to this game. There are a few different game modes included as well. There are the options to complete all the events, some of the events, and a practice mode where you can hone your skills on something in particular. This is recommended if you want to achieve high scores, as practice makes perfect. If you just jump into the main modes feat first, it should be noted that you're not really given much of a chance to prove yourself, so many instances practicing is advised. I'd also advise you to read the instruction manual, since how you control some of the characters may not be immediately obvious. Starting off, you choose your name and then your team. The available teams are based on real companies, with some of the choices being Casio, Santa Cruz Skateboards, and Milton Bradley. I chose Aussie Surfboard, sir, because of my geographical positioning. Crikey! From there, a second player to compete against can be chosen if you have any friends, otherwise you can go at it alone. The first event is labelled Halfpipe, and involves skateboarding on the before mentioned Halfpipe. This is designed in a cool way, because instead of generic push this button to do trick gameplay, it's mostly reliant on momentum and timing. You push up as you go up, and down as you go down, and the better times you are, the smoother your roll and this aids in pulling off tricks. These are what score you points, and consist of either hand plants with the A button, or aerial and kick turns with the directional pad. You're given a minute and 15 seconds to strike your stuff, or three falls, whatever occurs first. This was probably the event I sucked at the most personally, since I never quite got a hang of the timing. The hand plants came fairly naturally, but I struggled with the kick and aerial turns. Timing in these cases were far too critical, and I always seemed to just be a few pixels off. If you ever want to beat me in any event in California games, then this may be it. Let's just say that the three stacks added up quite quickly, and move on. Next up, Hacky Sack. Oh, uh, I mean, Footbag. Turns out Hacky Sack is trademarked. What a time to be alive. The foot bag event gives you another minute and 15 seconds to prove your skills when it comes to bouncing a small little baggie off your feet, knees and head. Points are earned depending on how awesome your stunts are, and time is lost if you drop the little baggie. The stunts are performed by mixing, jumping and kicking. If you're feeling particularly evil while playing, you can take out a seagull. Take that Livingston! This is probably one of the easy events since you're not kicked out soon after failing, only time is lost. This means that you can take risks when trying more advanced stunts for a better score since the punishment isn't so severe. The next event involves surfing a totally aggro wave, dude. This is pretty simple with the aim to ride it as long as you can while performing jumps. You're given either a minute and 30 seconds or four wipeouts to prove your skills. This event is also fairly easy, although re-entry to the wave from the air can sometimes be a bit finicky. I'm not really sure what the reason for this is. I guess the game favors a few pixels left or right for a successful landing, but it can sometimes be frustrating when it feels like you're wiping out for no good reason. After surfing, there is roller skating, which again, has interesting controls like for the skateboarding event. A is pressed to the rhythm of the roller skater's legs, and the better you do this, the faster you'll travel. Additionally, jumps are performed by holding down the B button to crouch to the lead up of the jump, of which happens when you release the button. To score points, jumps and spins are performed over cracks and various obstacles. Spinning is the surefire way to score great points, and interestingly enough there is no time limit, so go hard son. Instead, the round isn't finished until you fall flat on your face three times, and what a glorious fall it is. That's a bottle of rum in a night type fall. Regardless, I found it cool that it incorporates the endless runner type format for the round. I'm not sure if it actually does end at some point since I kept falling on my face, but if the level does in fact keep generating, then I'm sure some fantastic scores have been achieved. All corners of the skate park wouldn't be representative if BMX wasn't there, so the next round is exactly that. 
Unlike the roller skating, this includes a fixed course and there's also a two minute limit. Additionally, you're allowed three less severe falls or one serious one until the round is instantly finished. Points are scored by jumping over obstacles and performing tricks, and boy did I suck at this round too. Maybe even more than the half pipe event, and skating was a major hobby of mine during my teenage years. Ah, and what good times they were. Anyway, we can't spend all video reminiscing about being a dirty skate rat 10 odd years ago. If you're looking for another event to beat me in, then this is also it. I stacked it continuously, although I guess not as much as the half pipe. I did tend to land on my head a lot though, and sadly this was considered a serious fall and ended the round immediately. The California Games ends with an event called Flying Disc. I guess Frisbee must be trademarked as well. This is actually a two-part event, with you throwing the disc at the start and then controlling another character to catch it. The quality of the throw is gauged by a multicolored bar. Left is push to swing back, the aim is then to push right when the needle goes over the green part of the bar. Once the needle goes the other way, then there is another green bar to the right, where you want to push the right button as it goes over it for a decent throw. I found this to be one of the easier events, since I always stop the needle dead over the green bars, however catching it isn't as easy. You treat it to another face plant if you jump and miss it though, so I guess that ain't all bad. And from there, the California Games is complete. You win by either beating your high score, or beating whoever you're playing, so fun times all around. While the graphics are on the NES, I was fairly impressed by the detail included. I guess this is because of the large characters on screen, allowing more pixels per person, although the environments and backgrounds were nice too, giving off a nice Californian vibe. The music changes from event to event as well, and is catchy enough to get stuck in your head. They also mostly represent the chilled sounds of being a Californian dude or dudette, so it's definitely fitting for the game. California Games is no doubt designed to be played with friends. While playing by yourself is good to hone your skills and beat your high score, you probably will get bored after a few days. Having said that though, it is quite cheap, so if you do come across it, it is a great game to pull out at a party for sure. Sadly, California Games was the beginning of the end for its developer epics and is considered the last of their great games. Ultimately, the final blow was the development period of the Atari Lynx, but that as they say, is a story for another day. The good news is that some of Epic's former employees went on to do great things. Ken Nicholson, for instance, who created the Footbag game, went on to create DirectX. Impressive.